South Maui Community Plan Advisory Committee at uh, 5.30 p.m. on uh, November 4, uh, December 14. And let's start with a roll call. Okay, we have Chair Rob Rotman, Vice Chair Daniel Kanahele, uh, I'll go by first names, Tova, Everett, Lehua, Vernon, Here. Randall, Mike, Here. Oh, Mike, Cody, Here. Wayne. Now Wayne, you get to say here. Kiyoki, yeah, Kiyoki, Jennifer, here. and Ryan. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent attendance. Vilina mai na lala o kikomike o lala o kaya ulu na kapapa ho o lala na mawi hema. Vilina mai na ho i kapo e o ka keke en na ho o lala o kikalana o mawi. Me ka leho leho o mawi ne. O kaka kuhana i keya la na pahu hopo o kapapa ho o lala. Me na i kamaha na i piliana i kikukula ane i na hale. A i na lava kawa e ho o makaka ko na ho i i kuka i piliana i na i kama kukele kulekele no ke alakau. Let's uh, start today with a uh, short introduction by Mike. Aloha, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Moran, and um, I asked a question last week, and I should have followed that attorney's advice is never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. Because when Rob told me he was allowing 90 seconds for these, I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, I figure I'm the senior guy here, so I probably should be allowed the most time because I've got the most years in. But I guess it doesn't work that way. Um, but I give kudos to the chair because he did allow, well, he would allow a little extra time. And while I'm addressing that, um, I know he doesn't like it when I do this, but I have the floor, so I'm, I'm going to say that I think we made a very, very wise choice in electing Rob unanimously as our chair. Uh, I think he's been doing an outstanding job, and um, I think it's good to acknowledge that when somebody takes on a position and is doing a yeoman's uh, a job to get it done. Okay, back to me. Um, in my time, I'll say that most people that know me know me via the Kihei Community Association. And uh, so I'll, I'll try to talk about that because you can, I'll never get my life story in, but maybe KCA's. Uh, the KCA was um, formally uh, organized in, in 1960. So while it's not as old as me, it's, it's got a lot of years in probably older than some of our members here. And even before it was officially uh, organized and incorporated, uh, it was around for at least 10 years uh, as a grassroots group. And it was basically located um, in, in, of course, what was North Kihei in those days wasn't much else. And it, if you know where the ABC store is by uh, Wapu, uh, it, it was located there and uh, people will say, well, I know what the ABC store is, uh, the store that was up there before then. Well, this was central in the store that was before the Suda store. So it goes way back when, and uh, that's where the original post office was. So that was kind of the central uh, starting point. And now that we look around today, we see that Wayne's open air market is right in that area and go right across the street and you see Lahua's Kihei Youth Center is right there. Uh, across the other street, uh, I believe it was um, Vernon's dad who started the Kihei Canoe Club, which is right there. And then if you edge down a little bit further, you start to get into Tova's neighborhood uh, where she resides. So there's a lot of us uh, still in that same area where KCA started. Um, my involvement came when uh, I, I was involved in a grassroots group uh, concerned with um, 
water quality, the, uh, the, particularly the marine water quality, and as an animal activist concerned about the whales, I was in a grassroots group, and it was suggested I go to the KCA to get some exposure, and I did, and it worked pretty well. But then I got hooked in. They said, well, hey, why don't you join the board? As uh, we'll make you the uh, chair of the environmental committee. So I agreed, and I wasn't much of a, a group joiner, but I did. And then I quickly started to learn about organizations. When I complained about them, they were having a public meeting, and there was no PR. They said, oh, we were looking for a PR chair. Now you're chair of that, too. So I, I learned not to uh, volunteer and speak too much. But I am way over time, I'm sure, so I'm very proud to be here with this outstanding group speaking for our uh, South Maui community. Mahalo. Well, you know what comes next? Who? Who's next? Lehua. Okay, great. And I also want to especially welcome Randall, our new uh, new uh, CPAC member. So we are now completely, um, we're now complete. Our number is complete again. And uh, thanks to Lehua, we also have um, finalized an acceptance from Kalekoa Kaeo that he will be speaking to us next time, uh, December 21st. Um, I, one housekeeping thing I had is uh, we, we were asked if we were able to attend an additional meeting on January 4th, which is not originally on the schedule. And that makes sense because we're a little bit behind and, and we have a lot to do. And I said, yes, I can do that. But then, I, then I've heard from other members that that might, might not be fair anyway, even if we have a quorum, just because if we have a bare quorum, then it might mean that um, some vital input is missing. So I just wanted to open that up and see what people think about that. Is it okay to have a meeting, an additional meeting January 4th, if it's just a bare quorum. Hey, Vernon. Yeah, I was one of those that had concerns about that because if, like, bare quorum at, with seven, and we're missing six, uh, personally for me, I feel, um, you know, to vote on policies and actions, that, that would be a good thing. Because I, I just feel everybody need, needs to be here. If somebody's sick, if one person is sick, then that's okay. We still can. Then we move forward. Uh, Karen? You actually only are missing two members for that Nova or January 4th meeting, so that would be much more than a bare quorum. So with that information, are we okay with the January 4th? Uh, yeah. Mike? Yeah, I think that I, I was a little bit concerned if it was really going to be bare quorum, but if it's, you know, we've had meetings before, but we're absent too. I think that's reasonable, and we do want to try and catch up. So. I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Done. <laughs> Anything else uh, in housekeeping? I keep getting requests about um, doing the, the, the blue jeans online. Uh, people cannot make them because of their schedules and stuff, and... I, I can give yeah. you an update. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, uh, in order to do the blue jeans, it's going to cost quite a significant amount of money to hire Akaku for the extra service to do that. It also would require us to be here all the time, which we don't pay for KCC, but we pay for here. So. That's an additional expense that we had not budgeted for. So Director McLean has stated that we will continue doing the meetings as we have. However, we can look into possibly doing blue jeans type hybrid uh, meetings for those significant meetings, like the last few meetings where maybe you're making your final decisions or 
so maybe like one, two, or three meetings, but we were not able to, to do it for all of them. So that's the update. But we welcome testimony online. Uh, they can go to the website. They can obviously come in person, but if they can't come in, they can, they can go online, and we'll be happy to share it with everybody. Okay, so another, another thing I want to ask is uh, how people feel about having testimony being posted on the website as it comes in so that we uh, have a chance to, uh, to look it over in advance of the meeting. So this is about posting on the website because that way community can read them too. So they get, they get them at the same time as we do. Personally, for me, I would prefer to get it as quick as possible. Um, that kind of gives us time to digest it instead of giving one big shot. And granted that sometimes it may only be two testimonies in the group, but hopefully we're going to get more participation. And then if uh, we're getting a group of 12 testimonies, for me, I would prefer to get them as they come in, if that's at all possible. Mahalo. I'm, I'm the opposite. I'd rather receive fewer emails than more emails. So I prefer ideally one, but two's okay. Yeah. I would agree with uh, Everett that I prefer less emails. Just I don't want to lose track of something that might be an important testimony because it came in as a one-off and I overlooked it per chance. Uh, Tova. Uh, is there any way to have our cake and eat it too? Can we have them emailed out when they come in as well as being... They're eventually posted, right? So those who want to do it as a roundup can do it in the roundup at the posting, and those whose time is better spent re reading them on receipt can think about it during that time frame. I would actually like you guys to make a motion and decide what you would like. <laughs> this is to me I would be with the people who would be annoyed by the number of emails in my inbox especially if I'm not one of the people looking at it so I think you need to decide which if you want but if you want to have it every emailed every time then we can do that and then everyone can know they can look at the posted ones the next morning or you can get the two, the one at 3 p.m. on Monday and the one at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. And each of those will have the majority of the email that will be posted. So that gives you a full 24 hours in advance to check. Yeah, so so we got to give it like one cutoff time. So Tuesday would be 3.30, like, like the next batch. Because uh, we got tons of emails the last couple of days, you know, like updates and stuff. So, so as long as we get on cutoff date, you know, Monday is one, and then Tuesday might get some stragglers come in on the testimony, because you got to do that, I think, so that, you know, easy for, you know, we all get the emails all one time, maybe two times the most. The majority of the email comes in Monday night after the workday is finished, so the Tuesday email is probably going to have the most. If you want to do one email, that's fine too. But, or you can have them come as they come in. So, 
we are down staffing, so we're trying to do this the most efficient way we know how and with the amount of staff that we have, and we want to get it all to you folks. We also just want to do this one way and decide it tonight and be done with it because it's becoming a problematic issue on when we're doing this. And, and I know you guys are probably going, why are they sending me stuff every five seconds? Or how come I only get it once a day? So that's why this is coming up. So I am with Karen. If we can take a vote and just decide what you guys want and then we'll move forward, that would be terrific. Chair. Sure. Would it would I make it worse if I ask you? <laughs> What's easiest for you, Karen? I'm flexible. That's what. Thank you, Kay. Okay. Um, I would prefer uh, e an email on Monday afternoon, an email on Tuesday afternoon, and then posting on Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. That, that sounds the like level. a happy medium. Yeah. <laughs> I make that motion. I second it. <laughs> and, and if. Any, any further discussion? Any objections? Okay, so moved. Or so, so adopted. Um, okay, so, so we'll, we'll continue to look into the remote, uh, what options there are. Um, so today we have, uh, we have three items on the agenda and opening up the public testimony, but I just want to make clear that uh, the, the, uh, the items on the agenda that you can testify today are only these three things. These are the, the high-level goals of the plan, the livable community section, the actions there, and then possibly we'll get into, if we were really lucky, we'll get into the transportation section, the policies for the transportation section. So opening up to the audience for, for uh, testimony. So please uh, say your name and which, what you're going to be talking about. Good evening, committee members. Uh, my name is Steve Mark, and I'm here to talk uh, three minutes on pickleball. Um, I have uh, several slides out of these handouts that you got here, maybe about five slides. So that gives me about 30 seconds to talk about each slide. So this is sort of the, if you think back, the Evelyn Wood version of uh, presentation style. Uh, if you go to page two, um, we can talk about if you're not understanding pickleball in general later, but uh, if you go to page two, I want to talk a little bit about uh, where we are as far as South Maui is concerned. Uh, we have pickleball at Waipulani, uh, which was generously provided by the Parks Department in 2020 and 2021, uh, converting two tennis courts over uh, to eight pickleball courts over a course of about two years. Um, we have a uh, portable toilet there. Uh, we have a lot of visitors there. Uh, and locals, about 50 to 80 each morning, uh, not counting which we have in the afternoon. So if you just think about the number that we have in the morning, that's over 11,000 in a year because we have that every day going on every day. So uh, it has a big impact on uh, South Maui here. Uh, the reason why I'm here is to talk about the deteriorating conditions of our court, and this all then falls in line with the uh, Section 2.2, Safe, uh, Healthy, and Livable Communities for All. So if you go to page three, um, just an example, uh, in the past few weeks we've taken uh, photos and taken uh, numbers of people that play there. On those eight courts that we have, uh, we play foursomes on each court, so that's 32 people on the court at the time. And you can see by the information I have, we have almost that many uh, waiting on the sidelines to go in and play. So that's a large number of people going there to play. So it's very popular among the locals and the visitors coming in. If you go to the next page, uh, page four, uh, you, not having uh, seen the courts probably up close, I've taken some images actually this morning of some of the hazards that we have on the court there. And some of those are pretty significant. Um, these courts are pretty old there, so you can see the cracks uh, there and uh, ant hills. If you look closely at some of the images, you'll see a quarter sitting down there for reference, and a quarter is about the size of an inch. Okay, so you can see some comparisons going on there. So we do have problems with those courts. If you uh, move on to page five, uh, you'll see uh, that uh, we also have uh, confusing and unsightly conditions there. Uh, besides the safety hazard, uh, we have different colored courts because they used to be uh, 
tennis courts uh, that were green inbounds and red out of bounds. So we ha no longer have uh, tennis courts on those, but we have overlaid pickleball courts, or the county has overlaid pickleball courts, and so that makes it difficulty. We also have multiple lines, lines that are no longer being used that are there. Um, the county, uh, at, during the conversion of those tennis courts into pickleball courts, overlaid lines, but did not do anything to remove the old lines. So it is rather confusing. Uh, if you can imagine playing baseball with uh, base lines that are two or three, what are the kids going to do? What are the adults going to do when that situation comes up? Thank you. We're at the um, three-minute limit, do we have uh, questions for the testifier? Clarifying questions, Vernon. Yeah, hey, mahalo for that that presentation. Um, so, th this tennis court is on county property. It is. Yes. Yeah, and this light by um, Maui Sunset. Yeah. Correct. Yes. That then. So. Um, did you approach them, the county? Yes, the we have talked to the county. Uh, in fact, uh, through various efforts and uh, input, the county has made these changes the past two or three years uh, at uh, petitioning and the requests that uh, groups have made regarding that. Uh, as far as this, uh, it's sort of languishing. There is a, there was a Maui News article uh, about a year and a half ago and in that article quoted uh, Carla Peters uh, saying that uh, there was going to be an additional assessment on pickleball in the county and by the end of this year that assessment was suppo is supposed to be completed. So there's another 15 days or so left and uh, I'm not <laughs> always convinced that uh, the county uh, can make, meet its deadlines. So they, I know they, they proposed in the, the new South Maui Park phase three um, new, new courts, but when, whenever that happens, right? Yes, uh, we were, uh, uh, many of us were at the uh, open house that was yep. uh, at the old grade school uh, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Correct. And as that developed along, uh, the planners had told us that uh, when and if uh, courts are formed for tennis or pickleball close to where the recycling center would be, would be at the end. And so we're talking 10 years down the road on that. And one last question. So when I look at the, the photos, you get deterioration, all the cracks. Uh, this area floods, right? Um, actually, we've not seen the courts flood. Now, between uh, the courts and the shore, there have been floods there, and some of that's been water main breaks, and some has just been the gathering water. But the courts themselves, they get wet during the rain, and uh, we've not noticed any uh, mud buildup or Red dirt build up there. And so with like the co the corner storm we had, and and, and even even that even after that, yeah, this area floods around like you had described. I think you're right because uh, uh, it's still function as a wetland. You're probably right. Yeah, we did have some. So, we we played so only we were to play pickleball there. Yeah, just but, the grass around it. But that's how South Key Road get plenty of potholes and crack because below, still get the the water still percolate. Yes. So that's why we get plenty of potholes. So, so same story here, but I, I hope you, work, you, you know, things work out for you guys. Thank you. Yes. Out of the, the 11,000, um, that's a duplicated number, yeah? That's... Mm, that's unduplicated. I'm sorry, duplicated? That's yeah. an extrapolation of, say, 50... 50 morning participants per day. Yes. Uh, yes, you may have people repeating and coming in uh, every day, every week. So yes, those 11,000 include people repeat, uh, visitors or repeat locals. Yes, that's so correct. duplicated numbers. So yes. The reason I'm asking is that, and I don't know if this is possible, um, the county would allow it, but with that much people, um, you know, have you guys thought about maybe um, fundraising, donating something, maybe the county can do the work? I was just curious if there's any advocacy for that much people to, to Kokua to do something, because I know it's a wonderful sport and everybody's playing it. But I just wanted to know if that was a possibility to, to Kokua a little bit to make it happen. Maybe that might make things uh, uh, expedite. Excellent advice there. Uh, in the beginning, about two years ago, uh, we had uh, initiated, well, we had talked to the county about having a GoFundMe campaign where we would provide uh, the, res uh, the resurfacing, that, uh, that uh, fund building for that. And uh, we were instructed that the county, uh, even though it's happened other places on the island, uh, that was not suitable for there. 
um, heard it by hearsay that uh, the county might be beholden to a large donator uh, in that situation. So that was kiboshed. Okay, I just have to ask, so thank you very much. Thank you, okay. Um, thank you. Sorry, small room again there. Steve, thank you for your testimony. Um, was there, just a real quick question, was there any other answer from Parks and Rec besides wait for an assessment? No other? Uh, no. Um, the only more rec most recent activity we've had on there uh, was the addition of the porta toilet uh, at our request. And before that, it was the new um, nets, uh, which were about a year ago. Last four. Thank you. Cross fingers. Yes, cross fingers. Thank you. Further uh, clarifying questions? Uh, Daniel? Hello, Mark. Hello, sir. How many, um, what are the pickleball playing hours? Uh, I'll just ask some of my questions and you can have them. What uh, are the yes. pickleball playing hours? Was this picture of the deteriorating pickleball court in Waipulani Park? And the third question is, I don't have a third question. That's my okay. question. <laughs> the first question is the hours. The hours at Waipulani. Uh, go, yes, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, most play is in the morning or in the late afternoon after uh, between the winds, the trade winds. Um, your second question. Yes, these pictures were taken at Waipulani. In fact, uh, all those pictures were taken this morning uh, of the conditions. Sheriff, just a quick follow-up question. Wasn't that... Weren't those courts resurfaced not that long ago? No, they haven't been resurfaced. Uh, uh, if you look at the last page, I was just uh, taking a guesstimate that these courts might have been there 40 years. Um, the pickleball look, courts? Yeah, uh, the tennis courts. I'm talking about the, pickle, the dedicated pickleball courts. Uh, they were converted from tennis courts. Uh, these are pictures of the dedicated pickleball courts? Yes, which were previously tennis courts. Two of the courts. Thank you. Any further uh, clarifying questions? Thank you for your testimony. And uh, next testifier. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Elizabeth Floyd. I'm a resident of Kihei, and I'm also here to talk about pickleball. You might get a few uh, speakers on this topic. Um, so um, I just wanted to um, give some information that Steve gave a ton of good information, but um, uh, pickleball is the fast, uh, there's a handout that summarizes some statistics. It's a one pager that, uh, that went around. Um, pickleball is the, the fastest growing sport in, uh, in North America. Uh, the largest age bracket is 18 to 34. Um, it has uh, recently become a collegiate sport in some universities. There was a, um, a championship held at um, the University of North Carolina on November 19th. There was uh, prize money, $10,000 scholarship fund. Uh, I know that's really a uh, 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 concern with uh, you know, a lot of people are trying to get scholarship money. So um, we expect to see more and more of that. Uh, recently, there's been uh, several uh, pro teams uh, that have been created by uh, celebrity owners, LeBron James, Tom Brady, uh, Mark Cuban, Kevin Durant, others. Um, and it will uh, probably, it's expected to be a demonstration sport at the 2024 Olympics and expect it to be an actual sport in 2028. So it's really growing in, uh, in popularity and in numbers. And um, going back to the courts that uh, we have here in South Maui, uh, at Waipolani has had originally three sets of two tennis courts, so six tennis courts in all. The, f the last one, the one uh, uh, behind Luana Kai, uh, there's two sets of two there that uh, uh, abut one another. 
uh, one set was converted, two, two of those pickle boards, pickleball courts, one set were converted into eight courts. That, that's what Steve was telling you about. The ones that abut it are still tennis courts. They are in equally poor condition in terms of the surface, but they are courts. And we could get eight more courts there, uh, and that would alleviate the pressure that Steve talked about, where we frequently have more people waiting to play than there are on the courts. If those two courts, which are very rarely used by tennis players. I mean, it's, it's uh, really sad. They just sit there unused, and there's, you know, 40 people waiting to play. It's, um, it's just a waste of resources. I mean, if those were converted, it would take the pressure off, off the uh, players that are just waiting to play every day. And that's it. Perfect timing. Any questions? Any clarifying questions from the committee members? Uh, Everett? Do you happen to know what it costs to um, convert and re um, resurface? No. Well, the other ones, as Steve noted, were not resurfaced when they were converted. Right. They were only painted over and nets were put in, which was nice because prior to that, people used to haul in port portable nets every day. It was a real... Uh, ordeal, but and now that they've been converted, there's actual nets. Uh, then you know, at least we don't have to do that. But uh, they were not resurfaced; they were just lines were painted, and the cracks were filled in with you know filler, and, which has since <laughs> started to come up. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the testimony. Uh, next text, fire. Good evening, my name is Sam Morton. I'm a resident here in Kihei. And I'm a little disappointed because my friends, Steve and Liz, they, they told me to come here where I could rant and rave and, and yell and scream about the frustration of not having more courts. But everybody's so nice and civil, so I'm just going to try and be the same way. Uh, uh, pickleball kind of saved my life. Ten years ago, I had a heart attack. I used to be really active. They taught me how to play pickleball, and I've been playing in Kihei for about the last 10 years. The reason why pickleball is so much fun is because it is community-based and family-oriented. Okay, think about that. That's what we're here for, a community-based thing that people love to do and families can play. When I say families, I mean like seven-year-old kids and 90-year-old grandparents can go out there and play something together and have a lot of fun. That's why pickleball is growing so much. It started off as an old person's game for people like me, and now the kids are playing it. And they love it, and that's what we need. We need more courts. The Parks Department has said they will not be any more pickleball courts on tennis courts. So they created this battle between tennis players, which I was, and pickleball players. Similar to the old days with the skis and the snowboarders. Okay, we're here to stay. It's a great game. We can all get along. We just need more courts. Money. We have money to provide to the county to build and do these courts. They will not let us do it. Don't know the reasons. One was said that if some donor gives us 150 grand, we will be accountable to him, okay, or that person, because they want now a political favor, okay? But the money is there. There's no other reason not to build these courts. And if you were to build them, they should be built at Kalama Park, because Kalama Park has the best facilities where you can play at night, because you put, put lights there. You can't put lights at Waipua. Okay, it's never going to happen. But people who work can't get there. Okay, thank you for your time. I'm glad I didn't have to yell and scream because I probably would have got another heart attack. <laughs> Any uh, clarifying questions for the testifier? Uh, Daniel? Yeah.
Hi. I'm over here. Hi, Sam. Hi. Yeah, it's the pickleball and the tennis, tennis ball players. It's like the sharks and the jets. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, we have this brand new gymnasium here in South Maui, and and on the mainland, I've seen pickleball played in in gymnasiums. Is isn't that awful with that? Yeah, that's do they have a pickleball playing in the gymnasium? Yeah, they do play in the gymnasiums. One of the beautiful things about living in Hawaii is you really got to be outside. So it's great to be playing at what I call pickle beach at pickleball at pebble beach. Okay, you really want to be outside and play, even though there's wind. We tried to get indoors at the Maui Gym, the brand new facility, and they told us that they would not put lines on those beautiful courts because I think every year um, there's the big basketball tournament, the Maui Invitational Basketball, where the college teams come out. And I think I was told that it was built for them, so they didn't want to put any more lines. There's an invention that's called a laser disc that they can put on the top of the screen, and they can actually shoot laser beams down to mark off the exact court, so you wouldn't have to put lines. Mm -hmm. But nobody got into the cost of that, which I believe there's enough pickleball people with a lot of money who would be more than willing to help provide for something like that. But we really don't, really don't want to go indoors. It's, yeah. it's not as much fun. You do it, though. In the, like if you're living in Utah right now, you're playing indoors. Yeah. Any other questions? It's, I think I done. Thank you. Uh, next testifier. Good evening, everyone, members. My name is Ralph Forglione. I just want to wish everybody a uh, upcoming happy holiday season. Uh, I am president of Maui Tennis and Pickleball Association. We are a uh, Hawaii-based uh, 501c3 nonprofit charitable foundation. And uh, we organize um, and endorse the sports of pickleball and tennis here on Maui. I just want to give you a little info on what we do and what we've done so far and what we can do. Uh, we have now, um, we do, we, we, we provide uh, endeavors for both sports, tennis and pickleball, but we're here tonight for pickleball. What we've done um, is organize our, our, our first uh, island-wide leagues. Our first season was last season, which was our summer season. We had a total of about 130 uh, players registered in that league, and it was amazingly successful. Uh, the cool thing about our leagues is that it involves uh, players of every level, from just, just put a, pack, a, a paddle in my hand to the advanced players. And they're all playing together on the same course. Not against each other, but they're playing at their same levels against people at the same levels. It was incredibly successful. We had a league end event uh, at the Wailea Tennis Club, and it was lots of fun. We have our second season coming up, uh, which is our winter season starting January 7th. The issue was that the only courts we had access to were those at set private or semi-private facilities. And even those facilities were generous enough to say, yes, we will be a participating facility. The problem was that some of them have membership requirements. Some of them were 100% membership. Some of them had a hybrid membership. So if, if you weren't a member of those clubs, unfortunately, you couldn't get to play on those teams. Thankfully, to everyone at the County and Parks and Rec, we have a permit uh, to, to, to play the leagues at Waipulani Park. And I want to, we are so grateful for that because what that means is if you're not a member of a club, you can play in the league. You, you don't have, and so now because of that, we're on track for uh, 242 players registered in the league starting in January. And, and these are people from all, all walks of life here on Maui. Uh, we have, you know, uh, nurses, doctors, yeah. county employees, um, plumbers, electricians, everybody coming together. And, and as I see faces here tonight, most of which I'm not familiar with, when you're in that same venue together and you see each other in that, that, light, that same venue of the love of the sport, it transcends everything. It, it, it pretty much ex exemplifies aloha. So that, that, this is what we do, and as example, to show you if we're given the opportunity, uh, uh, MTPA, which is Maui Tennis Pickleball Association, we have a few things. We have made donations to the community. If you remember Kahului Elementary when they had the awful fire, uh, we donated $500 to them so that, uh, to help out a little bit. That, that money 
came from our pool of money from registration fees from all of the players. Uh, so this time around, we also have an ambassador program. And that is where um, Susan's also there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, the ambassador program is where you see people in the community that maybe uh, don't have the resources for a paddle or shoes or clothing or something like that. We provide that to them. Uh, can I have one more minute? Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, but are there, are there any uh, clarifying question questions for, from the uh, members? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, you know, your organization, um, you work out a schedule with the county, being this on county uh, slab. That's, that's right. what you guys playing on. Yeah. So you do you work out a schedule? Because what if somebody else came along and wanted to do the RC racing car track on the... On so Yeah, on the court. I'm trying to envision you, that. You, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. you got to work out something in the county. Because what if I came down there and I wanted to play hopscotch? Well, what so you guys do, have an agreement. What they do that I've learned is whatever uh, the facility capacity is, they uh, they give us a maximum of half the courts. They have to leave half the courts available for the public. And so at Waipulani, they have uh, eight courts, eight permanent courts, then, so they've given us access to four. But we can do a lot with those four courts, and, and we have. Uh, so, like I said, what just, just by that Parks and Rec, just giving us the tiniest little opportunity and giving access to four public courts, that in itself has created an opportunity for over 120 more people in our community to get out there and play. Uh, so what I'm saying is, if we're given as an organization the tiniest opportunity, we can do so much with that. Uh, I personally guarantee that we will do that. Um, so anyway, thank you for your time. Any other questions? Hello. Are other areas in the county um, big on pickleball as well? And do they have um, the same access or same um, challenges? Uh, absolutely. Um, if you go to any of the public spaces, which by the way, I want to mention, I'm also owner and founder of Maui G Sports, which is uh, the, home, the physical home of MTPA, but it's where we sort of supply the equipment to the local community uh, at really good prices and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, and I need to mention one more thing. One more thing that we do with our funds is we have started an after-school pickleball program for our KG here in the schools. It's going to start the third week of January with Kihei Elementary. Uh, we have 40 students that are on track to do this. So uh, uh, MTPA is purchasing all of the paddles. We're purchasing 100 paddles, two dozen nets, and 300 balls so that we can get the KG going. Uh, the first school is, Ki is Kihi Elementary, the second school lined up is Sacred Hearts, and we have two more that we're getting on track. And then we're, we, we have, I have a staff of people that are volunteers that are growing this. But, but to answer your question, um, we have uh, the, the course also at War Memorial. Uh, there's lots of people waiting they, because they're public courts. And we get calls all the time because people Google us and find MTPA, and they say, they think that we have courts, and you know, someday we look that we'll have our own, but they think that we have courts, so we refer them to all the public courts, because most people are looking for the public courts. So War Memorial, uh, Lahaina Civic Center, uh, they have um, four courts there that are sort of makeshift courts, but even that's not enough. Honestly, it's, it's just, it, it, so, and I can go on and on about the, 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 the public courts, and anybody that's been to the public courts can, can testify, especially in high season, it's, you, you wait a long time. I mean, don't get us wrong, we're happy to play, but there's, there's plenty of locations that, that are going through the same logistics. Further questions? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next testifier. <laughs> any, any further test testifiers on any of the uh, topics for today? Hi, Dave Good here. I hadn't planned on testifying, but I played pickleball once, and I was taken by the testimony before me. Um, and most of what they are asking for are actually kind of like operational issues, right? That probably are budget items and something for the new mayor and council to take on. 
But I thought maybe what I could do is help out is to provide some suggested language I just scribbled down that might help the pickleball situation. So on page 36 of your plan, policy 2.2.1 speaks to parks facilities. And I think what they're really, if you look at the life of the plan, there's pickleball today, but in 10 years from now, it may be something else, or 20 years from now, it could be something else. And I think what they're saying is the parks department needs to be more adaptive to what's happening, the changes that are happening in the community or what's happening in terms of what people want to do. So my suggestion is, is to rewrite this, say, provide parks and recreation, fa recreation facilities that adapt to changing recreational needs as part of a community's basic infrastructure because they offer services that are popular and essential to the quality of life and health of residents and visitors. So it's something to chew on, but I think that starts to address what they're looking for in this forum. Thank you. Any uh, clarifying questions, uh, Daniel? Did we get that language? I'm that was pretty good. Her. I'm going to show it to her so you can take a photo. Okay. A, take a photograph. Any other questions to testify? Uh, any other testifiers? Uh, Larry Stevens. Um, I'm one here to talk a little bit more about pickleball from a cultural standpoint because one of the things that afflicts our society across the entire nation is loneliness. And uh, especially in seniors, but, it, but in the time of the pandemic, a much broader a group of people have been, become isolated. And one of the things that is truly beautiful about pickleball is that not only do people come out and play, which is good, but when they're not playing, they talk. And in pickleball, you don't play for two hours. You play for 20 minutes, you come out, and you talk to people for half an hour, and then you go back in and you play again. So the social interactions around pickleball are extraordinary, much, much better than tennis, which I think is a great sport too. But just finding ways to draw a community together and get people interacting and being around other people in a positive way where they can have fun and laugh and get to know each other, I just think that's really one of the beautiful things about that sport. And I really hope we can find ways to support it better. Thank you. Any uh, clarifying questions for testifier? Okay, ne uh, next testifier. Okay, hearing none. Uh, oh, Daniel, you're not. You're not. Now there's six, six testifiers on pickleballs. Magic number is seven. Yeah, so we're one short. And so. Okay, public testimony is closed, and uh, let's see. Okay, and uh, can we, can we get up the, uh, the, the uh, slide that shows the uh, past and present goals? Yes, one sec. So the reason I, I brought this up is not because I want to change them, but it's because we never had a discussion around We've been talking about how to achieve these goals, but we never talked about what are the goals. And do these really cover the uh, so the one that compares the uh, Key and McKenna plan, the, uh, the West Maui plan, and then the, uh, the South Maui plan? Yep, that one. So, uh, I, mean, I noticed that there are some differences between the between the uh, West Maui and the South Maui plan, and of course there are much, much bigger differences between both of them and the uh, Kihei McKenna community plan. So is everyone comfortable with, with the uh, proposed goals? Do they cover the things we want to achieve with this plan? Is there anything missing?
If, if not, we'll just move on. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I, w I have um, no suggestions. I think it's good. I, when I read this some time back, I thought that was exactly right, that we were concentrating on things that are important to, to us. Um, and I think for our general community, that 1, 2.4, uh, that's the, the two issues that we consistently hear about from the community is the uh, North-South Collector Road and the, the mud floods. So this is addressing the mud flood issue. So I think that's very important to, get, to put that in there where it may not have been so important to West Maui, but it's certainly important to us. So I think that was a, uh, is a positive move that, that uh, you don't hear. Oh. I like that better too. Any, any other uh, discussion on this? Okay, let's move on to now the next big item. This is a big one, is uh, the actions for uh, goal 2.2, safe, healthy, livable communities for, for all. So last time we went through the, uh, the policies, this time we're looking at the actions. And uh, we did have a bunch, just so you know, we, we did have a bunch of suggestions for additions here from uh, Maui Green and Beautiful. Uh, when this first came up, I think it was two meetings ago, maybe maybe even three at this point. The first one, uh, 2.0.1, 2.01 is uh, to partner with a community organization to design, install, and maintain an entryway at the north end of South Maui. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I would just offer that, uh, I'll say this century, we have had a numerous uh, community question, why don't we have this for our community? Why don't, uh, for the visitors coming into uh, South Maui, why don't we have some kind of a welcoming sign, um, either on the highway or at the north, uh, North Kihei Road, South Kihei Road intersection. And there was many discussions and this was brought up in the uh, Alakai meeting. And uh, I mentioned that, that we had had that uh, issue. And part of the challenge that um, uh, the uh, Hawaiian people said was, was the name of Kihei was the challenge that uh, we had the wrong name. and. And the, the concept kind of went away because, well, what are you, if you use a different name, uh, is it going to be confusing to uh, visitors? If you call it Kulakai, most visitors won't understand what that means. So then the issue just kind of went away in, uh, in the Alakai meeting about how to proceed with it. Uh, so I have no solution to that uh, using the right you know, the correct name for it, but some sort of a welcoming sign um, uh, beyond just, you know, a big sign says aloha, well, that doesn't distinguish this community, and other communities have them, but, um, so yeah, it hasn't been brought up for quite a while, but we used to get that uh, question quite a bit, why we don't have it. As I mentioned now, the, it's, it's more on the uh, physical challenges of the North-South Collector Road and the mud floods than, than the welcoming sign. Mahalo. Uh, Daniel? So if we're talking about signage, you could probably go through the same process they went through when they named the, the high school when they picked a name, right? To, if you're going to put a name on there, you could just say welcome. You could say welcome in Hawaiian, you know, Elimai, uh, without using a name. <laughs> but, you know, maybe Vernon has some thoughts on that. Go ahead, Vernon. Yeah, this is my category. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, you know, so like West Maui, you know, um, when we started the Alakai, <clears throat> um, 
so I was on board with, you know, how we designated this community community plan as the South Maui community plan, following the lead what what happened with how it started in West Maui West Maui community plan. Now it's our turn, and then down the road, I was looking at you know keeping that consistent. So if you go Hana, you know it needs to be Hana community plan. When you go up Wailuku, it should be Wailuku community plan. And in that perspective, keeping it consistent with community plan. And Mike, Mike, you know, he representing what the majority of the community is asking. You know, like welcome to Kihei. Um, and it, it was a sign project that that started here through Kelly King and KCA. So it's it's kind of weird that we it's a county funded project. Hey Vernon, you know uh, we need the traditional names back up, the the correct boundaries. <laughs> but our community plan does not uh, uh, uphold that because we go north south. We do not go Malka to Makai, right? So. And, and Kihei is not, you know, we, we went through that whole process of naming the, the new high school. And, and we did not name that school that. We just gave them five names to choose from. And the school and their, their team chose the name Kulani Hakoi. Um, because um, it, it's not Kihei. You know, the, the, the entire name for that name is Kihei Pukoa which is where Sugar Beach is at right now, where the Pink Canoes is at. And that's the history of Ki Puko and it stays there. How it came past Ki Canoe Club and the pier over there, who knows, right? So kind of upholding, you know, oh, what's culturally appropriate. You know, it's not Kihei, but I went old Kihei school. My mom was one of those that opened that old, uh, work at that old post office, the original Ki post office. Um, not changing anything that's Kihei today, but moving forward and honoring, you know, this is the Kula Moku. We just live in the Makai side of that Moku. So, you know, we could even do a welcome to South Maui. Um, you know, if we want to be all consistent <laughs> and, and, and be safe. And I see people use South Maui more than Kulakai, and I get it, but, you know, I'm going eight years wearing this shirt, <laughs> trying to get the message out there, but that, that's my, my manama. So I think uh, I'll ask if there's someone wants to make a motion, otherwise we'll just move on. Not hearing any motion, we will move on. Actually, I, I guess we need to... We need to have a motion to, to drop it if we're not going to adopt it. So just a suggestion. With a lot of these policies there or action items, they're broad. You're not making a decision in this policy what it's going to say, what it's going to look like. You're supporting whether or not you want this action to occur. And when it does occur, then you would get down into the specifics. Yeah, we, we just keep that, because we can work on that. So, so you're making a motion to adopt it as it stands? Uh, no, we just keep them. <laughs> oh, we got to make a motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah we make a motion that we, that, that we, we, we keep 2.01. Okay, is there a second? Jennifer? Uh, any further discussion? Any objections? Okay, fine, fine, we have uh, adopted uh, 2.01 .01 as it stands. Uh, 2.02, implement streetscape beautification through an adoption program for trees, sidewalks, street frontages, and intersections. I think we have a little bit of that for the highway, but that's state. I don't think we have that for for the, uh, the county um, properties that it mentions here. It's 
So I think that I, I checked with Keola, and, and uh, we do need to either adopt or reject. So we need to actually have a motion for every single item here. So one way or the other. And we can have more discussion after. There is a motion. Uh, Everett? Is there a second? Second by, by uh, okay. Yes. And discussion. <laughs> well, either this is a very difficult one or a very, very easy one. I'm not, I, I, can't, I can't quite tell. <laughs> yeah, Mike? I'm not quite clear what adoption means, an adoption program. Can somebody clarify what that specifically means? I'm assuming it's like the highway adoption, you know, along the highways you'll see this company maintains this portion of the highway. That, that's the way I'm interpreting it. I don't know if that's correct, but that's the way I understand it. Thank you. It's also my interpretation. Any further discussion? Uh, Vernon? Um, this is for county roads. Okay. Uh, any objections? Okay, I find that this uh, two, we have adopted 2.02. Moving right along. Uh, 2.03. Uh, uh, Chair, I'd like to propose uh, an additional goal under beautification. Uh, action. action. Sorry. Got two, right? Okay, this is it. Okay, go ahead. Keep our roads safe, beautiful, and litter free. We have a, well, that's my motion. Uh, is there a second for that motion? Uh, Everett? Everett Beecher, sorry. You gotta be faster next time. Uh, in discussion, Tova. I was gonna speak to the motion. Are we at discussion? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't. Of course, I love those ideas. <laughs> Who doesn't? But I don't understand how they're actionable. Perhaps you can just fill in a little bit how how that would be something that the funding from the county would prioritize making, so. Litter, street litter is a big problem. So you can make it actionable by tying it to, you know, adopt a road. Similar to the, similar to the treescape. You can make it actionable by uh, maybe using something like a litter campaign, like they do across the country can make it actionable by um, um, enforcement. Most of the litter comes from uh, unsecured um, uh, loads on vehicles. It's not secured, it's not covered. So the majority of the litter comes from that. So we can tie, I mean, we can tie those specific actions to it, adopt a road, um, Litter campaign. I know you're asking for the exact verbiage, but and uh, you know enforcement, increasing enforcement to change behavior. Those are my thoughts. Did, has does everyone get the uh, proposal? Uh, Kyoki, a question? Just a comment. Um, do we not still have Adopt a Litter Highway? We still have that program, yeah? Is that, that's kind of like what you're talking about, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that program is state. Okay, so you're talking at the county level. It's county roads, right? Yeah, yeah. State, state has their own. Okay, okay. Gotcha. 
for the discussion? Uh, any objections? Pardon? I threw out a word salad, and I was hoping <laughs> I was hoping planning could help out with the actual tying together of the uh, the action. A uh, suggestion, I guess. Your original motion was keep our roads safe, beautiful, and litter free. I would add an addendum to that um, through enhanced uh, enforcement or. I'm not sure how else you would increase enforcement of police. Through an adoption we program? We have to determine who the kind of lead agency is yeah. for that action. I would suggest police could enhance or increase enforcement of litter. Okay. Kathleen, do you have a suggestion? So the way... My interpretation of what you're saying, right as it is, is a policy. But if you want to make it an action, it could be create a county adoption program to keep our roads safe, beautiful, and litter-free. Or you know, something that gives it some meat on what it is you want to do to do this. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, well, so can did even... you guys hear what I said? <laughs> right now, what I said. Karen said yes. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. But isn't that what we just adopted? It's like through enforcement and adoption program. Enforcement and adoption. Yeah. Okay. So that's, is that the motion? Is that what you changed? Amended motion? So let it be said, so let it be written. <laughs> so moved. For the discussion? Any objections? Okay, we have adopted the uh, new uh, the additional litter item on, on a, as an action. And did you have one more you said? No, okay. 2.03, uh, obtain funding and prepare an, an acquisition strategy for park open space areas identified on the community plan map for parks and recreational facilities in South Maui. The strategy will address planning, development, acquisition, and maintenance of areas with a priority on beach park expansion. Uh, motion? Yes. Motion by Everett. Second by Jennifer. Discussion? Uh, Daniel? So, could we make it Maybe a little more specific, acquisition and maintenance of areas with a priority on beach park expansion, which could include the, um, I can't remember the word for it, the beach, uh, the beach reserve area that uh, Brandy Corpus was, well here it is, the Waipulani Beach Preserve project area, you know, that's one, that's one low hanging fruit right there. You can just identify right now. So th this is adding that to the end of the, end of the item? Waipulani uh, Beach Preserve? Yeah, yeah Waipulani, you can say, with a priority on beach park expansion. For, for example, the Waipulani Beach Reserve area. Okay, okay. How about um, just summarizing it to government beach reserves? Then it can, yeah, suggestion. Because I, I know you have submitted a, a, an explicit proposal to uh, concerning Wailui, uh, uh, Waipuilani Beach Preserve. So that's coming up. Ties it together. So, let's see. 
Okay, so how do we tie those two together? Let's see. Yes? I would support Kiyoki's uh, suggestion of, for the government because we don't know what else might come on the, the table in the future. So why limit ourselves versus keeping it broad and open? Uh, Daniel? It's not limiting it. It's just giving you one, one place that actually is a low-hanging fruit right now that can become part of the park expansion, uh, more so than any other place along the entire coast, South Maui coast. Um, so I, I'm just putting in there to, to call out that low-hanging fruit, but not to limit it just to that. Just for example, let's look at that as you know, an actionable area where we can expand the park. Okay, so you do have the, the, had this proposal uh, to continue the work for the Kiheo Government Beach Preserve and help expedite the execution of the transfer of those Government Beach Reserve lands approved by Executive Order in the PNR April 2019 to the County of Maui. So, do you want to combine that? Or is, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but if can we look at just quickly uh, 2.08? Is that not referring to your specific beach project? Yeah, that was the one I just read. Right. Okay. So, can we just? Why can't it be in two places? <laughs> So, okay, so let, let's just let's deal with this one first then before we get to the other one. So, uh, let's see. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Wayne. Question for planning. Based on the future on beach erosion, are we going to see much of these beaches hanging around for the future? I need the, the thought is nice. I want to stick to the kind of realities. We've had erosion problems, and we see our coastline slowly d dwindling. I mean, I think there's, there's no question that we're, we're going to suffer the effects of erosion and shoreline sea level rise. And that's what this is looking at, is to, to strategize and fund and develop and acquire land so that we can continue our, our parks and our beaches, however that may look like. I'm done. Okay, so, um, okay, so, so we have a motion. And it was seconded. Yes. With a friendly amendment, okay. Is everyone clear on this? Okay, so Daniel, could you read the proposal again? I'm sorry? Could you, could you read up the proposal again? The amended proposal? The, the original one? No, no, the amended one. I don't know what the amendment one is. Oh, okay, oh, you're asking what I, okay, I got you. Yeah, uh, so just at the last sentence, the strategy will address mining development acquisition and maintenance of areas with a priority on beach park expansion like I'm going to say like the acquisition of the beach like like the acquisition of the Waipulani Beach Park Preserve any further discussion 
so I'm, I'm asking if there are any objections because, and it's not like I'm trying to force this through, I'm just, I, I literally mean that. If anyone wants to discuss further, we'll do that. But otherwise, uh, let's not waste more time. So any, any objections to adopting this as proposed? Find it so adopted. Uh, two dots. Actually, it's time for uh, time for break, right, Mike? Yes. Okay, <laughs> ten minute break. Okay, so on to 2.04, explore the feasibility of creating community gardens which could include fruit tree forests and parks and the feasibility of stewardship hoys or community organizations running them. And again, as I understand the procedure, someone needs to either, either make a motion to adopt or, or to reject. Second by Brian, okay. Uh, discussion. Uh, Verna? Just, just saying, um, the, the fruit tree forest? Um, maybe some fruit trees, how time for grow? in South Maui. Could, I mean, my mother get mountain apples in her backyard, which is weird. <laughs> but it, it, it works, so just saying, fruit tree forest, that, that's just my highlight. It doesn't mean we have to think otherwise. If we get more irrigation from R1 water, then maybe it would work. So, uh, Lokilani School, we have probably the largest garden growing food in, uh, throughout the whole DOE system. We don't use R1 because we were told by those from the mainland and Europe that we cannot use R1 for the food. Hardly. The uh, fruit, she said, fruit cheese can. Just learning. Thanks. Yeah, lettuce maybe not so good. Uh, Cody? I just wanted to add to that, um, you know, throughout the Pacific. Um, agroforests are always like very prevalent and um, you know, always the, the thought was always about food, clothing, shelter, and medicine. Yeah, what are the things that we can survive on that actively live around, that actively grow around us? And uh, fruit forest, fruit tree forest sounds cool, but um, I mean, I would like to see some implementation into more agroforestry. <coughs> yeah, the word? Maybe um, add the word diverse or diversity of, I guess, tree or fruit trees and plants. Um, and I support what Cody just said, but I just using the word um, like diversity of, so we're not just tied to, I guess, certain, I don't know, certain um, items. Is that what? Because the fruit tree to include is just one item to include, but if we just say a diversity of, um, I guess, uh, plants and trees, or uh, how about actually including the word agroforestry, which could include agroforestry. Fruit tree forests and parks. Call it yeah. out. So I don't make motions. So someone else needs to needs to suggest that. Cody, do you want to suggest that? 
So yeah, I make a motion to amend it to say um, agroforests uh, and fruit trees, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. I think actually it'd be, it'd be good to have it separate, like so you have agroforestry and fruit tree forests and parks, because otherwise it sounds like you want agroforestry and parks, and that's kind of a different thing. You want you want ag real agroforestry, right? Yeah. Yep. So agroforestry and fruit trees and parks. So accept that as a friendly amendment? Yeah. And second it, yes. Uh, more, more discussion? Any objections? Motion passes. Uh, 2.05, explore, this is going to be more controversial, I think. <laughs> 2.05, explore the feasibility of providing overnight campsites within the region. Uh, Everett? like to, um, to amend that slightly, explore the, the feasibility of providing overnight campsites with restroom facilities within the region. That, that's a motion? Yes. Okay, so we have that motion, uh, including with, with uh, with restroom facilities. Ed, is there a second for that motion with, with that wording? Brian, second, seconds. Uh, discussion? Uh, Mike? Okay, I, I have concern that that uh, could turn into more of a um, tourist industry uh, facility rather than for local people. I don't know that you could prohibit visitors from using it, but I had that kind of fear that um, when it, they were talking about those, um, any, any campsites, well, is, is that going to be bringing in more people, more uh, less affluent people who can't um, afford to stay in a resort, so that's, oh, I can just go there and camp out. How would we uh, address that on, in there? Thank you. I, I think that's already happening, and I think it's happening in our beach parks. So I look at this as, as um, um, yeah, at least it would be set up to accommodate them appropriately. I think, they're, I think it's already happening. You okay? Sorry, Tim. Um, I believe the county just passed a couple of laws, right, forbidding that type of stuff in uh, on roadsides and in neighborhoods. Um, as far as the campsites, uh, that would have to be explored further at, later on. As far as if they're gonna restrict that type of activity, obviously, right? Yeah. Mike, I think what the the uh, council was addressed were uh, physical campers, you know, a vehicle or those type of things, not people, uh, you know, just at a campsite with a, a tent. I think that, I believe that's what the council addressed was um, uh, vehicles. Vehicles, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Thank you. Tova and then Levoa. I hear you about being concerned about the outcome, but because this is only asking to explore the feasibility, I kind of feel like that stuff is what's going to come out during that exploration. Hey, Daniel? I'm sorry, the who have? Oh, okay. Daniel? I agree with Tova's, Tova, and uh, I, I agree with Lehua. I could read your thoughts. <laughs> Why don't we say uh, establish, get rid of explore the feasibility, 
establish overnight campsites within the region. It's a 20-year plan. I think within 20 years, we can establish a campsite in South Maui. And to my knowledge, there are no campsites in South Maui. So, yeah, there are very few campsites, period, on Maui. Why don't we say establish, you know, make the wording strong with that. Well, everything that Everett said, what establish and um, eliminate, exploring the feasibility of providing and just say establish overnight campsites with everything else Everett said. <laughs> Accept it as a friendly amendment and the second. Uh, the whole. I'd actually like to keep it at explore because when you establish, um, it's almost like we're we're like getting closer to saying like this is how it's going to be, but I think we need to explore it. And I like what Mike said because I think it should be for residents only. But um, I understand that it's happening. But I'd still like to um, explore. And doesn't I mean I don't know if when you explore it, we're going to have to have a timeline or um, I might get it about the the time frame can be forever, but I, I like to still keep it at explore because I really think we need to explore this a little bit further. Um, but so that's my manao on this. Daniel, was your um, suggestion to put establish, explore the feasibility of establishing overnight campsites? I just wanted to use stronger language, you know, to you know give it a higher probability of something happening. That's why, that's why I suggested that language. So as I understood, it was actually replaced that first entire clause, so it would be establish overnight campsites. Is that right? I'm assuming that they will <laughs> <laughs> that will be part of it. <laughs> Is it feasible, right? I'm, I'm thinking those words, feasibility would be part of the process. Um, um, I, would just, I would call for the motion, and if, if it fails, then let's go to... Um, Let's keep it at explore. So the motion just, has just, just so we can can move on. Okay, so the motion then is established overnight campsites. That was accepted. Okay. Yeah. We, oh, no, it was not. It was established overnight campsites with restroom facilities within the region. I think Daniel and I are both assuming that we're not going to establish things that aren't feasible. It's kind of a scary assumption, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so uh, this one I'm going to put the vote just because I think we may need to re revise it a little bit. But those in favor of the amended motion, which says establish overnight campsites with restroom facilities within the region. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. And those against? One, two, three, four, five, seven. And were there any, anyone abstained? She abstained. She abstained. Okay. What? Okay. Okay. Most motion, motion, motion failed uh, with that modification. Let's try again. Um, explore the feasibility of providing overnight campsites with restrooms in the region. I think Jennifer beat you there. So we're back to the, uh, the original amended proposal. Any further discussion? Uh, I think this one will pass, but anyway. All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, no? three, four, five, and those against? Were there any abstained? Wayne abstained? Okay. Okay, so motion passes. Uh, on to 2.06, work with the Department of Land and Natural Resources to document and map existing government trails 
and identify missing links to improve connectivity and function with the ultimate goal of developing an active and usable network of public trails throughout South Maui. Uh, Cody? Um, I'd like to propose to make the priority high instead of medium. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that the priority is um, subject for debate by you all. Is that correct, Karen? Yeah. That's not on tonight's meeting. That'll be at a later date when we review the priorities. Oh, that, that's right. Sorry it's, about that. It's later in the schedule is uh, prioritizing. That's right. Um, so let's see. Do, do we have a motion to uh, to adopt this? If needed to be, but um, uh, to document and map existing government uh, I wanted to add in, um, and cultural tra trails, or I just wanted to put in something about the cultural um, trails or whatever it may be, since they're going to do it for government. I don't know if all cultural trails are deemed government trails or vice versa, but since if we're asking them to do it, then we might as well also add in the cultural trails, if any, are to be identified, since it's not in there. Everett, now, help me on this. Are cultural trails? Are they? Um, are the, who who decides what's a cultural trail? So uh, government trails do have a, a particular significance because they yes. belong to the public. But you can, very often people will also say historical trails, which means that's that's someone trail that used to be used, even if it's not used anymore. Yes. So that's, and so, ever because of this is by the um, Department of Land and Natural Resources, I would assume them, but others. Because I know looking back at one of these, maybe this yellow yellow one, it had a list of cultural places. So I just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to leave those out. So historical or whatever it may be, but just something that would imply cultural as well. So I'm fine with historical. What about cultural access trails? Yeah, something to, to that effect. Uh, someone can make a motion, then we can discuss this more. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion uh, to add in um, the historical, what was it? Cultural access trails. Historical and cultural access trails? Or his, okay. Mm -hmm. Cultural access trails can pertain to it. Can pertain to fishermen's people gathering now. This policy is meant to um, work with the natural Department of Land and Natural Resources to document the uh, not all the heli trails, which are the government trails from the 1885 government map of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Um, so if you want to mention the not all the heli trails, then that would strengthen it. And that, that would address my point also. I'm OK with that. Um, yeah, that's fine. I actually feel that that would severely restrict it because we, I mean, I've worked a lot with other people on, on identifying trails, which are not, not other heli trails, but what should be, because they, they were, uh, at one time, they were created by the government. They may, be, may not have been used for decades, but they belong to the public, so I would not want to restrict it to not other heli trails. But I'm not making a motion. Could you make, recommend um, wording that would support that? Because I, I, I like that. And sometimes there's trails that we don't know about until some way, some way, somehow somebody finds it and so forth. But if you could word that, that would be great. I'm not sure how this sounds, but how about uh, to, um, to document and map historical and existing government trails and existing government and cultural access trails. Document and map historical and existing government and cultural access trails. That gets it all in. I don't know if that sounds right, but. I, 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 I like, like give this one shot. 
So right after document and map, you put one comma after map. And then we put and establish and preserve access to then well, what we're adding is and establish and preserve access to existing, yeah. So again, I think that's not bad. The problem is just that there are, there has been, and there, I think there will probably be in the future too, mm -hmm. conflict about is this a government trail or is this not? It's not currently, it's not an existing one, but it should be because it was built by, um, by, by the government and so everyone should have access to it. So exist, existing kind of restricts it. it becomes approved, then we can, right, rather than the other wording, because they may approve a trail that they, it's not uh, listed. I'm not sure I'm going to be much help here, but I give you an example. We were working on a subdivision in Ma'alaya, and through the research, and the old, old maps, it was discovered that there was some kind of old historical kind of road or trail or whatever you want to call it. So we recognized and had conversations with DLNR that we, we would really like to be able to work on, like we know this stuff is happening, but we know we have a long way to go and a lot of work to do. So. I can't tell you if that was a cultural trail. I, I, I don't know, but we knew it was on a, a map. So I think, um, I don't know how deep you want to get into this because if it's a government, if it's been identified on these old maps, they know about them, and then we would continue to work with them to discover what were these? What did they mean? What were they used for? How do we want to protect them? And that's what we were trying to do with the subdivision, kind of like, hey, okay, this is here. How, where are we going to move the parking lot? What are we going to do? So I think in a way that's why this could be kept broad because we really don't know, but we want to look into it. I don't know. I hope that's helpful. I think Kaviki wanted to say something before that, before Cody. I, I guess for me, for, for you guys' consideration, I'm really focusing on the last two lines of this action item. And I, I totally get and hear where you guys are coming from and what, what, what we're trying to do. But the, the last two lines in particular is is what kind of concerns me. Cody? So I was kind of looking at uh, identifying missing links to improve connectivity. And what does uh, identifying missing links entail? Um, when I look at identifying missing links, I'm thinking like, um, say there's there's um, an area where you can gather limu uh, ele you know, and and the trail that to go gather the limu ele isn't there anymore, but people still know where the limu ele is, and they're gonna have to go off the trail basically to get the limo ele um, Does identifying missing links also pertain to things like that? You know what I mean? Like um, say there used to be a trail to get the limo ele but it's not there anymore. So, you know, someone could say like, hey, my tutu used to grab limo ele from over here, but no more trail to go over there anymore. So does you know creating missing link or identifying missing links kind of pertain to things like that? 
That's kind of what I was concerned about. So let me just, just to make this more more uh, kind of real. So one of, the, one of the trails I've been working on a lot, and I'm leading a hike on this very, very soon, is the old Haleakala Trail, which uh, Haleakala Ranch claimed was theirs. But um, David Brown and uh, Tom Pierce, with support from a bunch of us, they, they managed to fight in court and get it recognized that it was a public trail. So it's not an existing government trail until it became a, a re recognized as, as, as a government trail. So it needed a fight. So I don't want to just say only existing government trails. I want to recover ones which historically belong to the Hawaii, to Hawaii, to all of us. To all of us. Um, th th this, I guess this, I didn't realize it, but I guess this kind of encompasses several different things in this one, this one item here. It's trying to cover mo more than one thing. I think what, what uh, Cody says is definitely part of it. I mean, I, that's why, that's one, one way I think about it. I like to go hiking, get to this gate, so, or someone put up a hedge and I can't get any further. And I know it should be possible because the, the trail continues a little bit further along. So that, that's a missing link. And same thing with the fishing trail, some similar kind of thing. But it's also talking about documenting and mapping and government trails. So it's, it's covering a bunch of stuff here. But I, I, the, the part that I felt strongly about was exactly that not limiting to the, the ones that are currently recognized as government trails because not all of them are yet. Chair Rob. Over here. Uh, yes. I feel like um, we're kind of circling back to historic, right? So like maybe um, existing government and historic access trails, some type of verbiage like that, inserted right there. See how that feels. That's close to what I suggested, but I think, Cody, you wanted to include the cultural access part, right? Yeah, I want to make sure that where it says um, identifying missing links, that we can use that to pertain to um, things that are not yet discovered. You know, like um, trails that, that were told by Kupuna to, to the Keiki about certain areas, but it's not on the map. So I want to make sure that um, these areas can still be utilized. And, you know, it can fall under that identifying missing links. Kind of making it broad, you know. Okay, I need someone to make a motion. <laughs> Pull it all together. Sorry. Well, I, I just need to make sure that um, maybe Colony can help with that. But um, when we say missing links, identifying missing links, that that yes, it can pertain to, um, or what was the original intent behind that? Could be oral tradition. Okay. Mahalo. Um, Kiyoki, would you say say one more time your suggestion, and let's see if, if that, um, that makes... my my suggestion was just um, inserting after the existing government and historical access trails, and then you had something else. Or? No, I think it's fine um, as long as the, the identifying missing links yeah. can pertain to like cultural trails and yeah. um, oral history, things Absolutely. like that, then, then it should be fine the way yeah. it is. And historical can pertain to kind of all of that if you interpret it that as such. Yeah. Can I suggest right, language? Yeah. Um, so work with the Department of Land and Natural Resources to document and map existing government and historic access trails and establish access um, to improve connectivity and identify missing links to improve connectivity and encourage cultural practices. And you might be want to leave off with the ultimate goal of de developing an active and usable network. 
because that would be more about paths that connect to each other than about going to the shoreline. Okay, okay, I had a thought. Yeah? <laughs> Can you just repeat the last ending phrase of that? You don't need to repeat the whole thing. From missing links to improve connectivity and... Okay. Identify missing links to improve connectivity and encourage cultural practices. That sounds good. And does someone want to make that motion? Okay, okay. Sure, I'll make that motion to adopt. Cody, second. Any further discussion? Uh, any objections as, as formulated? I find we have adopted that motion. Motion passes. Uh, 2.07. Actually, uh, Yeah, okay, 2.07. Work with the community to map and identify areas where public shoreline access needs to be preserved or expanded, including public rights of way and parking. Everett uh, makes the motion. <laughs> Brian seconds. Uh, discussion? Chair. Sure. Uh, Wouldn't okay, okay. this also have to be also done collaboratively with the uh, DLNR? Because the community knows what the community knows, but we they can only assume where a legal right away is or isn't. You know what I mean? Just wondering if that should be mentioned. I don't have any specific suggestions at this time, just food for thought. It kind of ties into the, the, the thing that I proposed, which is which I would, I would like to see right after that, that um, it, it actually depends. You know, some cases it's, it's private, some cases it's county, some cases it's state, it depends on where it is. But um, I think the, the, the intent with this 2007 is what's bugging the community? You know, where's the community you want to go and they can't go? And then, and then once, they, once that comes up, then you can figure out, should they be able to go there and how? So. So we have a motion and a second, right? Yep. Uh, any, any further discussion on 2.07? Any objections? I find the motion passes. So I can't make a motion, but I would really appreciate if someone else would. <laughs> I can I can read the text which I would like to have in there. Just so you know, restore restore public medial and lateral access to the shoreline along the entirety of the South Maui coast, where mandated by uh, Hawaii Revised Statute 115-4 and 115-5. Everett moves. Jennifer seconds. Can you repeat it? Because I did not catch that. Restore public, medial, and lateral access to the shoreline along the entirety of the South Maui coast were mandated by HRS 115-4 and 115-5. Discussion? Yes. Um, could someone explain to me what uh, medial and lateral access actually is? Uh, so medial is access to, to the shoreline, and lateral is access along the shoreline. Oh, okay, yeah. that's easy. Thank you. 
Medial is sometimes called uh, perpendicular in, in, in different contexts. Any discussion? I'm, fi I'm fine changing it to perpendicular. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's easier for the public to to understand, yeah, I can say after I wrote that I wrote this a long time ago. This is like over over a year ago, but uh, I did find that perpendicular is more commonly used. So, yeah. um, let's make that one one change to the motion. To your own to your own motion. Yes. Seconded. Okay. Thank. You. Everybody, any any objections? No, nope. I find the motion adopted with the change from medial to perpendicular. Okay, um, so next we have uh, 2.08, and there's also a, a, a motion or a suggestion from Daniel. I want to, Daniel, you want to just make the Make the motion with, with your amendment, or with your addition. I don't actually have the, uh, the written motion. I think it was sent out. Oh. OK, I just have my hieroglyphics that I don't have a urim and thumb to interpret. Would you put that up on the screen, maybe? I'll just read it then. I put, I, put up, I put up Daniel's suggestion on the screen, but if you're looking for the... Um, yeah, so I make a... I make a motion to uh, uh, 2.08 to amend the language as you see written in your hand copies that are before you. I'm going to read it just so everyone, have, everyone, everyone gets it. Continue Thank you. The amended motion. Continue the work of the Waipuilani Beach Reserve Project Grant 5522 to identify and implement an access and preservation plan for the Kihei or Government Beach Reserve and help expedite the ex execution of the, of the transfer of those Government Beach Reserve lands approved by Executive Order and the BLNR April 2019 to the County of Maui. Uh, Cody? A couple of things. Um, I know Brandy didn't want to have the grant specifically uh, used, and I know we had talked about generalizing it more. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Cody. Yeah, I, I was the one that brought that up. Um, from an implementation standpoint, it gets very difficult for us to know which grant is which and to do research. Grants end, new grants start, new numbers come about, new nonprofits, new agencies, new people. And so uh, I really encourage you through this process to not identify specific grants, people, not, I mean, Make it broad. Sometimes broad is okay. I'll, I'll strike. Um, no, it, Dan, yeah, friendly amendment to strike um, Grant G five five two two. Sure. It. We had a second. Was is that is ever okay? Okay, so that, that was, so friendly amendment accepted to strike grant five five G five five two two. Question from the Hua. Is this only um, pertaining to the Waipuilani uh, Beach Reserve project or other or similar projects in the future? So it's a little bit more broad. I think, as formulated, this is specifically about the Waipulani Beach Reserve Project. Okay. 
And then um, the, what sorry. Daniel had added, is that only pertaining to that project? Only to that. Or I just wanted to make it broader um, and add in, continue to work, uh, the work of the Waipuilani Beach Reserve Project and other similar projects. So going forward 20 years, so it stays broad. So not specific as was stated. So striking the grant number and then adding and other similar projects will actually be more beneficial. Sure. OK, accepted by the second as well. So I think it now says, continue the work of the Waipuilani Beach Reserve Project and other similar projects to identify and implement an access and preservation plan for the Kihei or Government Beach Reserve and help ex expedite the execution of the transfer of those Government Beach Reserve lands approved by Executive Order and the BLNR April 2019 to the County of Maui. Any discussion? Any objections to adopting the motion as, as revised? I find we have adopted motion 2.08. I guess the numbering will change, but you know what I mean. Two, uh, 2.09, and here again, that there was a proposed, proposed addition by Daniel. I wonder if you want to just make a motion to adopt it with your Addition. <clears throat> 2009, I think I, I, I'm making a motion to amend it, to redevelop a homeless strategic plan for South Maui. And it was like a dangling participle. So I wanted to add something specific to it and use the cost of government commission's report on homelessness in Maui County, April 2022, as a starting point for the creation of the plan. Everett seconds. Yeah, we have it on the screen, so. Discussion? Okay, uh, any objections? And we have adopted the uh, motion 2.09 with the, with the addition. Uh, at this point, I just wanna say that we have, there's, only, there's really only this one motion, this only this one action um, for uh, housing or homelessness and uh, uh, again, I'm not going to make any motions, but we did get, we did have some suggestions for what could be added um, by Stan Franco, who is probably the person who's worked the longest on Maui for on uh, homelessness issues and, and housing issues. And yeah, you can see them in, in orange below there. So just putting it out there, if anyone wants to make a motion. For those of you who can't see the uh, type up there, I can read this out to you. It's build at least one managed encampment with proper sanitation and utilities uh, for those with no or very low income. Um, and the second one is encourage the creation of county policy to permit single family dwellings. I'm oh, sorry, that's, that is not, that's a different era. <laughs> Just the first one. There's actually three of them, three separate ones. Okay, so that is. Okay, so allow accessory dwelling units, uh, conversion of vacant retail buildings and other housing units to add to affordable housing units available in South Maui. And then that third one, encourage the creation of county policy to permit single family dwellings to be converted into duplex units. I have a question. So are these to be added on, I mean, continuously or these are just new numbers? It's up to us, but I think these are separate enough that, that they, would, they would each warrant their own number. Yeah, yeah. Sounds better that way. Let's 
So we don't have to do anything with these. It's just if someone feels uh, we showed them, they need to make a motion. I shall make a motion that we uh, <clears throat> include the uh, what's written in orange with the arrows pointing up. <laughs> and uh, I know it can be all together, it's 209, or uh, you can make, uh, you can separate them. But yeah, I'd like to make a motion to include all that language. Is there a second? Sorry to mess with the flow, but clarifying question. You want that to be one action or three actions? I'll make it one. Okay. Put it all together. Well, I open to a friendly amendment. <laughs> I would friendly amend it to three. Sounds good to me. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's, let's do one at a time in that case. So you, at this point, uh, your motion is build at least one managed encampment with proper sanitation and utilities for those with no or very low income. And I'll ask, is there a second? Uh, Everett seconds. A uh, discussion about that one item. Tova? I like the thought behind this. Um, I'm wondering if there's a word other than encampment that would bring a little bit more Dignity to it? Does anybody have any language suggestions or share a thought on that? Would um, uh, build at least one teeny home, um, teeny home project, um, something like that? I mean, I, I'm just, and I say teeny homes because at least the ones in Honolulu, they they look nice. I mean, they're yeah, you know, they're they're attractive. They're well maintained, as opposed to encampment. Sounds like a, um, you know, it sounds like a slum. I mean, it sounds like something you would see in a third world country. Yeah. I, I agree with that, but that kind of is a, tech, a term that's used in the, that's actually, a ter, managing capital is actually a term that's used in the housing, um, you know, that's their, their movement. I mean, the people, people who work on housing policy, so it has a meaning, but I, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Chair? Yes? Yeah, Stan's not here, so to clarify what it is, but maybe what I'm kind of envisioning is a, a, a combination of uh, living facilities that could include tents, could include tiny homes, it could include a variety of facilities. Yeah, something like that. I don't know if that's what Stan... So I, I think it, it, the, the intent is that it's more of a temporary thing. It's not like, a, not like permanent housing. So it's a, a, to address a, a catastrophic situation where people are you know, in, in dire need on the streets as opposed to a, you know, a housing development. Yeah. Well. But it's similar to 2.05, I think, um, because encampment can also mean, mean campsite, base, etc. So do we want to distinguish that this is not a campsite, per se, because it's very specifically for people with no or very low income? So I just see just a slight similarity to 2.05. And I know this is... Um, pertaining to um, housing again for no or very low uh, income uh, people or residents. So, any thoughts on that? So I believe that there already is a plan for this to put it in, in Welikaha, on, on the, very near the, near the highway. So this is already in the works. Isn't that true, Daniel? 
there is discussion about doing that. Oh, okay. I see. Um, so um, you can take encampment out and put holly. And then the other question is build at least one managed encampment or holly. When you read that whole sentence, is that a one and done deal for that 2.09? You know, it's like we suggesting that we build at least one. So that mean one holly or 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 like what we talking about for like well like a home. You know what I mean? When you read that sentence that looked like one one and done after you build that. Or at least one. If that Okay. So, yeah, I guess I read them as, you know, you build at least one, then, then we all good. Hatova? It isn't my area of expertise. So if this terminology is not, um, is what's accepted within the space, I'm fine with that. I'm just getting my education that that doesn't mean what it sounds like it means. That's okay, too. I think the term is used in, in, what, in the current discussions around uh, Welakao managing camp. That's, that's what they're calling it. And I, I don't think they mean Islam. I think they mean something more, more, more with more dignity than that. It's just, it's just to distinguish it as, as temporary. The intent is not that people will stay there for a really long time. And, and as a matter of fact, even the encampment itself may not be there for a long time. Hey, Cody? Um, what about using Hale or Pu'uhonua? Oh, Honu is good. It's great. It's actually better than Hale. <laughs> Pu Honu is like a place of refuge. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe to what Vernon was saying, um, you know, one and done. That's what it kind of sounds like. So maybe say start um, start by building at least one manage Pu Honu. So that means that it's not just one and done. Um, okay, so we need, we need, need a motion, but um, just consider is it is enough to just say build at least one pu'u honu, or do we really need to say manage pu'u honu? I don't think you really need to say manage there because it's kind of in the nature of a pu'u honu or that um, it's, not, it's not a random thing. I guess as a maker of the motion, you know, I got to. I have to say something now. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, like, I like Pu'uhonua instead of encampment because that's pretty broad. It could mean a lot of things. And whatever uh, Lehua said, you know, I like that language too, so we can add that. And Pu'uhonua instead of encampment. Did I miss anything else? The question is just uh, do, if we add, if we replace encampment with uh, Pu'uhonua, do we still need managed? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I managed to put Yeah. Okay. So you're modifying? I don't know what the others think, but that's fine. Yeah, so, so, so you're uh, modifying the motion? Yes, I'm modifying it. And, and it was seconded by Everett, right? Okay. You said that, okay. So build at least one managed Pu'u Honua. And then the rest is the same with proper sanitation and utilities for those with no or very low income. I'm just checking, Lehua, was that what you wanted in there? That part, the beginning part? Yeah, I mean, just to see start off with, you know, so, because it still says the same thing, build at one, I mean, at least one. So start off by building at least one. So that means that we're looking to do more if it works out. So, and then with, with the proper sanitation, et cetera, could you just say within the, the, I mean, guidelines, there's going to be guidelines that states all that, right? So, no, not at all. When you build someplace like that, you have to have proper sanitation, utilities, etc. Or you have to specify all that. Yeah, you don't have to specify. Yeah, yeah. So I just didn't want us to, you know, maybe take up space by putting those things. But if it makes us feel better, because of course we'd want that, but I just wanted to clarify. So, because if that's the case, then we're gonna add another 100 other specifications. So we don't want to do that, so. Uh. 
can we read the motion now? I, I didn't write it down. <laughs> Hoping someone wrote it down. Build at least one managed pu'u honua with proper sanitation and utilities for those with no or very low income. Is that okay, Nehua? Nothing that I said was in there. I know, I noticed that. Could you could you say what, what your proposal is? My proposal is to say, start off by building at least one managed uh, uh, within uh, compliance or building compliance uh, for those with no or very low income. What was that part? I, I like the beginning part, but I kind of have to put you don't, you don't want to include with proper sanitation and utilities? No. What I had stated is within compliance. That means it has to be in compliance with the building codes, which would then mean it's mandatory to have sanitation and the utilities, etc. So you don't have to put all those in because by law you have to include that in the building codes, etc. Okay. Right, Kathleen, that's what we were... And Lehu, I'm maybe, a little bit, little different. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little concerned that that the language you're suggesting opens it up into a lot of building permits that might impede the projects. Whereas if we keep it just to, I like the first part, and it, but if we keep it just to as is the sanitation utilities, I think it's um, since it could be temporary, it would be more likely to to happen to be built. Because these, this is, I mean, this might be, you know, these could just be temporary um, facilities. They could be pop-ups, Dep depending, on, depending like on the that? demand. Should we state something like that? Um, uh, about it being temporary? Or just start off by doing one and then see how it goes? I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but I get what you're saying about the sanitation utilities. I'm just looking towards other, you know, things that were... Talking about housing, we keep repeating what needs to be done, but just those two sanitation utilities. I thought it was just by law that you have to have those, so it's just trying to cut it short. But I get what you're saying. So I'm not familiar with the development process of these things that can impede a development like this or a project. So I would agree with you, um, but I don't know if it's necessary then to just see maybe as a model uh, or something, or just leave it as is already because too much time is being spent on this. So. Um, but yeah, leave the rest, just add, start by building, and pu'u honua. So, yeah. So, start off with building at least one managed pu'u honua with proper sanitation and utilities for those with no or very low income. Okay, I'm good with that. And Everett? Okay. Any uh, further discussion? Any objections? Okay, fine, motion has passed. Um, you want to take another 10 minute break? Okay, five, five minute break. Okay, so, uh, stand now here. So, the next of the, of the three items was uh, allow accessory dwelling units, conversion of vacant rental retail buildings, and other housing units to add to affordable housing units available in South Maui. And uh, Daniel, do you want to make the motion exactly as it's st written there, or? Finish the pu'u honua. But the part about allowing an accessory dwelling unit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we included that in the action? 
No, we haven't we haven't processed it yet. So could, could you use the mic? Oh, sorry. Is that where we're at right now? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, like I think that's more of a policy than an action. Uh, I would agree. A couple of things on this is we allow accessory dwellings, and we recently changed our code to allow two in most cases, and lots over 6,000 square feet can have one. And if, um, you could create a policy that says something to the effect of support the conversion of vacant retail buildings to increase the supply of affordable housing units. That would be a policy. It wouldn't be an action. Can we make a motion at this point to make that a uh, policy? Because we're in the it's, action, it's, right? it's, we're, we're on the actions. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. yeah. You can bring Maybe we can defer it to later. Yeah, I, can, I think I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting back and reviewing some stuff later, so... Uh, and then the final one here, if, if you want to make that motion, encourage the creation. I'll encourage the creation of county policy to permit single family dwellings to be converted into, that's another policy. That could be, a, that could be an action. That could be an ordinance. Could go either way. Okay, I move to make that an action. I know there's been discussion about this, but I don't know if there's anything actually in the works. Uh, Jackie? Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second by Wayne? Uh, Jackie? Thank you, Chair. I can just give you a, a brief update. So. Um, the department has a proposal to update the residential zoning district to allow um, uh, duplexes uh, with a special permit. So um, if you want to go beyond and just make it outright allowed, you could um, uh, include this um, about encouraging the creation of this policy. Discussion? Uh, Tova? Clarifying question. So is the suggestion that it be a policy and therefore something we're deferring or an action? No, it could be an action. This is create, create an ordinance. So okay. just for clarification, sorry, Chair. Um, so the um, uh, bill, it's actually with the county council now. Uh, the proposal is for residential zoning district. Um, because currently, residential zoning district, you can only have a single family dwelling, and depending on your, the size of the lot, you might be able to have some accessory dwelling units. Uh, the proposal is to allow a duplex um, with a special permit, which goes before the Maui Planning Commission. Um, so that's with the county council now. It hasn't passed yet. So um, I don't know if um, individual property owners are going to go through the trouble of getting a special permit, but they might, or like say, um, a developer might, maybe they have 10 lots, it's worth their effort to go and get this special permit to build duplexes. But it would allow two families to live independently in bigger units, you know, um, subject to the setback requirements. They still have to be, you know, so many feet away from the property lines. But they could live in bigger units versus, you know, one getting a main house and one having to live in a smaller accessory dwelling unit. So, um, but still subject to the, um, the setbacks. So it wouldn't be, um, you know, like these huge homes that are right on the edge of the property line. So, but what I was saying was if the um, committee wants to go further and encourage um, a policy to um, allow duplexes as outright allowed, you know, that could be something that you could say and then that would direct the department to um, update the code to move them from um, special uses to permitted uses so that you wouldn't need that special permit. Uh, Chair, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, Jackie, if you're in a community 
that has an association in CCNRs, uh, how does that play in, in, into this? And they prohibit, you know, Ohanas or duplexes. Uh, yes, thank you, um, Commissioner Leach. So um, uh, the department has its zoning codes, and that's what we would enforce. But uh, any um, homeowners association could impose stricter restrictions, like maybe they don't want accessory dwelling units, or maybe they don't want, you know, anything else. And um, the county would not enforce those. Those would be enforced by the homeowners association. But yes, um, homeowners associations could certainly um, impose stricter restrictions if they wanted to, yes. You were going to say something? No. no, just a caveat to that is, uh, you know, CCNRs can prohibit things um, that are allowed by the zoning, but they're not allowed to be more permissive than what the zoning allows. So it's just two sides of that. Yeah. It's no trip like this. More discussion? Uh, any objections to adopting the uh, as as written? I find the motion has passed. Okay, two two dot eleven. See if I skipped anything. Nope. Two dot ten, right? Because because we inserted those in, be, in between. Uh, okay, two dot ten, uh, and there as well we have a couple of additions proposed by by Daniel. So just to save time, I'm going to ask Dan, do you want to propose this motion with your additions? It doesn't have all my additions, and some of them. <clears throat> the, the additions I have are. Uh, to the Kihei Police Station as a passive park with emphasis on open space and preservation of natural habitat. And then... Yeah, taking into account the preservation of the, I think the language on, the remnant Wooly Wooly Dryland Forest. So that's what's missing. The remnant Wooly Wooly Dryland Forest. Avoiding impacts to culture resources and minimize Minimizing grade, grading to preserve natural topography, topography and ge geology. Okay, so as up on the screen. Uh, I don't have my, my, my glasses to see the screen, but uh, if it's on there, then I'm, I'm sure it's on there. So that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Wayne. So, so uh, yeah, discussion. So, I, I'm I'm not opposed to this at all. However, I just want to point out that uh, that parcel is going to come up again because uh, it's one of the ones that's been discussed a lot for for housing, including in the uh, handout by Kate Blystone. Yes. Well, I'll speak to the motion because I think it's been seconded. So, uh, the passive park I took from the. The, uh, the current Kihei McKenna plan. It's in that. Uh, so I, I used that. I took it for, I, I used Passive Park. We don't have any uh, Passive Parks in South Maui. Um, we need more parks. And, and what makes that place special, there's a police station there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the police station is using that area that was designated as park in the current plan. But there's still a lot more land there. And behind the police station, there's a remnant dryland Wooly Wooly Forest. And there are cultural sites, too, behind there. So I think one of the things, if they're going to look at that as a place to build affordable workforce housing, We'll have to do studies. 
botanical studies and archaeological studies, and they're going to have to avoid the wooly wooly trees and, and the archaeological sites that are there. So they have to avoid them. Might as well make a passive park out of it. You know what I mean? At least some of it, you know? Maybe they can put some affordable housing, and you can have a passive park too. And maybe you can have a campsite up there. <laughs> right? That could be a place you can go camping, which we don't have. Anyway, I'm speaking, that's, sorry, I'm a little off today, but yeah. The other, the other thing that's special about it, which is the reason why it comes up in, in the housing discussions, is because it's county-owned. So there's not a lot of county-owned land there, so that's why it keeps coming up. And it's, and it's Malco the highway, so it's, it's within the growth boundaries. Uh, did we have a second? Yes. It was second by Wayne, okay. So you have it, you have it on, this, on the screen. And I think you have it in your uh, printed as well. Any any further discussion? I'm, I'm going to vote against this one just because I'd rather see it used for housing. The, um, any further discussion, Daniel? I don't know why you can't have both housing and protect the very rare, endangered, lowland habitat. I'm I like that part. I like the, the willy willy trees. I like you can but, have both. But just the, um, using the whole site for passive um, park, I don't like. Oh, I see. Is that Karen? Part of the reason it hasn't been developed yet is it is blue rock and will be really hard to develop and expensive to develop. So if that's affecting your ability to move forward, you might want to take that into account. But I mean, I have seen plans for developing it. So people are definitely, people with money are definitely considering it. So regardless of this blue stone at this point. I'm not arguing one way or the other. <laughs> I'm just saying that the, it, is, it is an area of contention for, for good reason. Uh, Daniel? I don't look at it as an area of contention. Not at all. Um, yeah. Also, we have a very important uh, drainage way, the intermittent, intermittent stream called uh, Kamaole Gulch. It runs right along there. The reason why the uh, dryland forest is there is because it's protected by the lava flows, their fingers of lava flow coming Mauka, and it, it, it acts as a substrata to protect the, the native habitat, the plants that are there, and the archaeological sites, you know. It hasn't been disturbed. So I like the fact that, I don't know, I like to see a wilderness park. So it occurs to me that this just says develop a study. And if you really wanted to prevent it, it should be a policy which says, uh, says uh, don't, don't develop it. So we could, get, we could come back to this when we, when we review policies again. We, so there's no contradiction, you could do both. So the motion has been proposed and has seconded. And uh, any further discussion? Okay, since I know there's, there's opposition, I will uh, put it to the vote. Those in favor, as uh, on the screen and, and printed, please raise your hand. And those opposed? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Find the motion has passed. Two point eleven, a partner with federal and state agencies, private landowners, and community groups to develop a management plan for the shoreline areas of Kealia. The plan should address coastal resilience, recreation, 
resource conservation, possible relocation of North Kihei Road, and other applicable issues. So moved. So moved by Everett. Uh, second. Second by Brian. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, discussion? Uh, Tova? How about a friendly amendment to replace the word possible relocation with inevitable relocation? Call it like it is. Inevitable. Instead of uh, including uh, possible relocation of North Kihei Road, um, inevitable relocation of North Kihei Road. I 100% agree, and that's what I was hoping you beat me to it, but thank you. This was uh, brought up in the 98 plan, and I think the fact that it's been brought up again shows that uh, it's really important. And I can tell you from growing up in that bay and traveling through that road like many of you all have, the erosion is immense. The beach is tiny compared to it was when I was a kid, keep playing around over there. When the waves were flat in Maalaya, we would go, we had the need to get barreled, right? So we would go sussing out little pukas in the reef and there was so much more sand back then. Um, Yes, it needs to be done. It needs to be um, seriously looked at. That environment is, is too crucial to keep driving through. There's all kinds of homelessness as well along there. Yeah, thank you, Tovo. Is that amendment accepted? Yes, and, se and the second. Yeah. Uh, more, more discussion? So your verbiage, one more time. It's just replacing possible with inevitable, right? Yeah. Any objections? I find the motion has passed with the change to inevitable relocation. <coughs> 2.12, uh, work with the Maui County Arborist Committee to designate as exceptional trees, all trees or groves of trees that have historic or cultural value represent an important community resource or are exceptional by reason of age, rarity, location, size, aesthetic quality, or endemic qualities. Is there a motion to adopt this or reject it? I'm just question. Isn't this something that's already happening? I mean, is this something that requires a, a, a new action? It's done mostly just by individuals nominating trees or oh, landowners nominating trees. So when, it's, when it says work with the county arborist, who is it supposed to work with the Maui county arborist? Uh, the county lead agency would be the Department of Parks and Recreation. Okay. Um, doesn't, isn't the Maui County Arborist under the Department of Parks and Recreation? They are under the, yep. So? So it's kind of happening, but this would give it more, more emphasis on expanding what's already happening. It's a little strange to say that the park department should work with arborist who is an employee of the department. I would hope they do that already. The arborist is a the Maui County Arborist Committee is a committee. It is not an employee. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, I just have a comment in reflection to one of our um, community members who testified in terms of um, making sure the trees were trimmed properly, etc. Um, but I think that was a big emphasis. Is just having. Um, I guess a uh, more thoughtful consideration in how trees, and I think she was talking more private landowner, but also public. So I think by having this, um, we'll just support the fact that we just got to make sure we are doing, you know, what, what is uh, right. And I like the cultural value, et cetera, in this. So I'm just thinking back to one of the testifiers who had a strong emphasis on protecting the trees as uh, seen fit by but I get what you're saying, uh, Rob, but again, I just want to make mention of that testifier. 
Uh, do we have a motion to adopt this? Mike? Yeah, I would just uh, add, uh, Lou, that's uh, Randy Wagner, and she's working with Now Green and Beautiful. And she did originally try to expand it beyond the uh, a a private property, but there was uh, some objection from the planning department, not the long range plan, but planning, uh, about challenges with it. So uh, she revised it, and that is going, if I'm right, it's going before the county council meeting this Friday. So just for information. Uh, Cody? Um, I'll move to adopt this as an action. Second by Kyoki. I just want to mention, since, since, since Randy's name came up, uh, she did have the suggestion to uh, possibly use two designations, exceptional trees and community trees. But we don't have her here to explain that, so. Um, but anyway, we have a motion and a second. Yeah, discussion? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add to that, um, historically, there was a lot of groves throughout South Maui, and when the Hilton came and started um, taking out all those coconut trees over there, like a lot of those trees were historic as well, and so, yeah, I'm glad that to see this in here. Discussion? Uh, any objections to the text as it stands? 2.12? I find the motion passes. 2.13. We're doing pretty good. Uh, 2.13. Oh, this is a long one to read. I'll read it fast. <laughs> Develop a tree canopy plan for South Maui. The plan will include an inventory and geospatial database of existing trees and canopy cover, an analysis to determine the financial worth of existing trees, considering the replacement value based on size and age of trees, flood abatement, carbon dioxide sequestered, energy usage saved, reduced heat island temperatures, and increased property values, etc. And a goal for canopy cover increase in strategy to monitor progress and build a program to achieve the goal. Important considerations include providing full canopy trees along roadways, pedestrian and bike paths, and in parking lots. And there was a proposal, I think, from Daniel to extend this. Is that right? Yes, I added a fourth action uh, to the list, which the fourth action and require parking lot trees <clears throat> that fall under Maui County Code Chapter 19.36B080.808.879.223 landscaping be <laughs> sorry that's my phone number <laughs> landscaping be adequately maintained to provide a minimum of 50% canopy coverage of the hardscape Do you want to make that motion? Oh, yeah, I'd like to make that motion to add that additional action to 2.13. Is there a second? Second by Mike. Uh, discussion? I would like to add a five to that. <laughs> um, to favor um, native and endemic trees of this area. Do you accept that friendly amendment as a friendly amendment? Can you repeat that, Cody? Number five is? Uh, number five would be to favor native and endemic trees of um, this region, so of like our dry forests, our shoreline. OK. Yes. And who was the second? Oh, Michael's second. Yeah, he approves that, too. OK. So it's a friendly amendment now has, now has five uh, bullets. Uh, discussion? Etoa? Um, I, I like the, the spirit of making sure we're including native and endemic trees, but I'm a, a little bit 
uh, wondering if it fits within this, because it seems that this action is mostly about developing an inventory and analysis of what's currently out there. I don't see any of the other uh, actions within this action actually referring to recommendations for what to plant. So I'm wondering if that might be under a different, is that under a different action? <laughs> we talked about trees a little ways back, I forget where that all fell in. Or does it seem like it's appropriate when we're developing a tree canopy plan that we could have that? Uh, um, an inventory of uh, our database of learning our existing trees that we have, I think is important as well. Um, maybe I'm wrong in this action, but it just kind of felt like um, if we're going to be doing any kind of um, analysis or um, inventory on what trees to use as a tree canopy, developing a tree canopy plan for South Maui that um, that our native and endemic trees are included. I think it fits because it's not just doing the inventory, it's also planning for the future. So saying what we should do in the future as far as canopy goes. And uh, I think it's worth taking into account. I mean, Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I think it's worth taking into account uh, that they are local native plants. Sorry, I didn't hear. Was this put after important considerations, um, but before what Daniel suggested? Uh, because important considerations include providing full canopy trees along roadways, pedestrian paths, and in parking lots, and, and favoring native and endemic trees of this region. Uh, do you accept that, Daniel, as another amendment? Yes. And Mike? Okay. Cool. Uh, further discussion? Uh, any, any objections? I find the motion has been passed with the, uh, with the two additions. 2.14. Um, okay, so we had, uh, oh yeah, okay, so we have some comments there from Elaine from Maui Green and Beautiful. But anyway, the uh, the text is uh, 2.14, work with Maui County Arborist Committee to provide training for arborists on maintaining full canopy trees. And does everyone see the uh, uh, the comments by, by Elaine, just in case someone wants to take those into account? She proposes that it be not the County Arborist Committee, but under the Maui County Arborist, and the, okay, this is kind of an assumption though, in the future Division of Community Forestry that may be under the Public Works Department, where current Maui County Arborist position is. Anyway, the, propo the, the proposal from the Planning Department is work with Maui County Arborist Committee to provide training for arborists on maintaining full canopy trees. Uh, is, there, is there a motion to adopt or reject this? And I think I know where this is coming from because, uh, as you as you guys heard the couple of meetings ago, there's a lot of unhappiness about the way t trees are just chopped off at the top, and I've seen a bunch of dead trees. And I know that the, uh, the I know the county arborist is great at that, but I don't know if the county arborist committee is so great at providing training. I guess that's what she's she's getting at. I know the arborist. I know. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's great at that. I don't know if the Arborist Committee is capable of doing that. Uh, Daniel? Just, just a thought maybe, uh, then just instead of Maui County Arborist Committee, uh, change it to Maui County Arborist to provide training for arborists on maintaining full canopy trees. 
kind of a shortened version of what she's got there. Just a thought. I think that, that's what she's getting at. So we don't have a motion yet, right? So some, you can make you could just make that motion if you want to. Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion to amend two point one four <clears throat> to read work with Maui County Arborist to provide training for arborist on maintaining full canopy trees. I'll second that. Second by Cody. Discussion. All right, uh, any objections? Okay, I find uh, 2.14 passes with that change to Maui County Arborist instead of Maui County Arborist Committee. And it's 8.32, not bad. So that means we'll continue with uh, transportation next time after uh, Kalikoa's uh, presentation. And I expect that, so we, we have asked uh, Kalikoa to speak for half an hour, and it may be difficult to limit him to half an hour, and I expect that there will be questions and discussions after that, so that will probably take uh, not an insignificant part of next meeting. But I think we can get through uh, a substantial section of the transportation policies at least next time. Can you send next time? Okay. And I've... I am adjourning the meeting at 8.33 p.m.